It really seemed like you guys enjoyed that video about my top 10 books that hit historic lows that I thought were unjustified, unfair, that I got another 10 for you, if you're up for it. If this video does well, I'm gonna give you top 10 books that despite a down market are still way too high. <clears throat> Let me know in the comments down below 10 books you think are overpriced even still, and I will choose one of those to be in the next top 10 video. Don't forget we're doing a push for subscribers. We're doing tons of giveaways. I'm giving away every single copy I bought up of all the Captain Carrot figures. All I ask is that if you're a winner, make sure you send me a picture of you and the figure. I'm gonna make a montage once they're all given away. All right, folks, let's kick off the list with Punisher issue number four. This is the first appearance of Microchip. It is not a book I've talked about on the channel before, but I've always kind of filed it in my brain under the underused, undervalued selection. There are not an overwhelming amount of 9.8s out there, despite this being a very notable Punisher character. Well, in 27 to 2018, this is about a $125 book. Fast forward six and seven years to today's market, it is an $80 book, with one guy even getting lucky picking it up for 52 bucks. This is not a book that exploded at all in the comic book boom. It went unaffected. So it's really weird to see that this is not still at those 125 or honestly higher. Notable character, low census count, can't really justify or explain this one. Next up is going to go to Vengeance number one. This is the first appearance of America Chavez, and in 2017-18, this was about $300. I was finding some prices over and even a couple under, but the average equates to $300. You know what happened to this book in the boom. This is one of the most affected books, and thus might be one of the only entries on this list that could be justified. But this did hit $1,000 right now. It's down to 230 bucks. But what's interesting is it's still a very big character. There's still legs for this character in the movies, and certainly comic book-wise, the sky is the limit. So it's a little weird to see it go for that low. That being said, unlike many others on this list, that one has the highest census count. So I kind of understand that one. Next up, we're gonna go with Detective Comics 583. In 27 to 2018, this was about a $275 book with some people shelling out $300 for this. Before the pandemic, before any craziness, this book did go up in the pandemic, of course, like most books did, but not heavily. This book right now is $200 and someone actually snagged it for 154, although that is an outlier. 200 for the first Ventriloquist and Scarface, really? That's surprising to me. It's an 80s book that's not littered with many 9.8s on the census. A little bit of a surprise to see this one on the list. Next up, we have Moon Knight number one. Littered with importance and first appearances, it is far more than just Moon Knight's first solo series. This is the first appearance of Khonshu, as well as others. This, in 2017-18, was about $300. This book went crazy in the boom, and so it, market has corrected down to normal, but it did overcorrect, and the book is now at about $200. By the way, if you're looking for a good book to spend on, apparently a Moon Knight number one is now a great entry level 9.8 that you can shoot for. $200 is, I think, more than reasonable for everything that that book offers. I know there are more books on the census now of 9.8 copies that exist, but I still think that shouldn't impact it to the level that it has. Next up, we've got to talk about Green Lantern 25. I can't even tell you all the things that happen in this issue. There is so much key significance in this book, it's frankly ridiculous. So many Lantern Corps, so many Lantern members, notable deaths. The list of things that make this book what it is is a pretty long one indeed. Well, it used to be about a $220 to $250 book just like seven years ago. This book did go into the 300s during the comic book boom. Well, it is hilariously overcorrected, not just in the past year, but in the past month, in even just a matter of weeks, it recorrected down to like 175. Now, it just shot down to 115, and I'm partially responsible because I just won an auction on eBay for $101. I was the outlier sale for this book. I couldn't believe that I got it. 
I put in that 101 when it sold like six days left on it. And I was shocked to see six days later that I bought the item. I was like, okay, I'll take another Green Lantern 25. Uh, that should not be what that costs in any universe. Next up is Web of Spidey, uh, 97 first appearance of Nightwatch. This was a great entry level book, and now it's really a great entry level book. It was about a hundred bucks seven years ago. Very affordable, 9.8. You could even back then uh, see it for 90 and even 80 dollars. Awesome, great, especially for what it is. The fact that Spike Lee almost made a movie that might have just been a rumor, but regardless, right now it's 40 bucks, and I found one outlier where someone got it for $21. Literally cheaper than what it costs to get a book graded. Yikes. Let's move over to DC. There's not many DC entries, but Batman 536. First, Tim Drake. Just like in the video a couple days ago, the first Cassandra Kane, this is another extremely unhinged book. I have seen it be 150, 350, 200, 300, it's been all over the place. The general consensus was in 2017, 18, it was $300. Well, right now, it's like 175 bucks for the first appearance of Tim Drake, the greatest Robin ever, really? Yeah, I haven't kept my eye on this, so it was interesting to find this one in my research. I assumed this would still be $300, and no, it is not. And especially since that's a dark spine, that's a tough 9-8 to get, Really surprised by that one. Number three is going to belong to Preacher number one. Big notable key here. And I have a theory, but in 2017-18, the book was about $400 with some sales even higher. Granted, there was an AMC show, which is obviously going to impact that book. Well, interestingly, this book, just like our Punisher number four, untouched by the COVID boom. For some reason, everybody ignored this one. And... Um, so it didn't really explode again. It actually has come crawling down. It's at half of its value from seven years ago, which is wild. Keep in mind, the natural rate of inflation should see everything going up. So natural rate of inflation should put the book at like 450, maybe 475. 200 bucks is what that can be purchased for right now. Preacher number one. Goodness. Wow. And especially once again, another dark spine. It is a trickier 9.8 to get. I've tried a couple times. I haven't quite gotten that one yet. So, hmm, interesting. Uh, number two and number one are insane. I'm gonna start with number two, uh, Ghost Rider 28. This is the first appearance of Lilith. It is the first cameo of the Midnight Suns. And even seven years ago, this book was $125, which I actually, I remember even making videos on this channel saying that I thought that was under, valued. I thought 125 for what that book was, was low. Well, get this. That book's fair market value now is at $50. And I actually found several outliers, which maybe they're not even outliers at this point. It could be a trend in the 20s and even 30s. Someone got one for $29. Here's what you need to know about Ghost Rider 28. They came in poly bags, which means you cannot get a 9.8 on that book without pressing. So you are at least $40 into this book without any shipping. And there's people out here buying it for $50 with outliers at 29 bucks. It no longer makes sense to get that book graded. Wow. Okay. That's a big deal. Number one might be more egregious. Why the last man? Number one. I'm going to tell you that the fair market value was 700 from six, seven years ago, but honestly, I saw books even higher. I think the average is about 700. Right now, it's $300, equating to $400 lower than what it was six years ago. It's also one of three entries on this list that relatively did not explode in the comic book boom. It was one of the books that went unnoticed, unaffected. Natural rate of inflation and buying power would probably put this at $800 if you were to keep the course from 2017, but instead it's $300. So I hope you enjoyed this. I have now at this point found 20 books with intensive research. A lot of time went into this. 
of individually looking up keys, some of my favorite keys, to find the ones that are lower than what they were from actual six years ago, and most importantly, the ones that I feel are not justified. I think some of these prices are crazy. I think these prices are wrong, and you can quote me on that. I, I understand supply and demand. I understand macroeconomics. The world is trying to pay bills more than comics. Get your priorities right. That is what you should be doing. The people that do have money now are just picking up great books left and right, man. I'll tell you that. If this video does well, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm going to give you a top 10 list of, despite a low market, books that I think are still overpriced. It will be my opinion, so you should need to always take it with a grain of salt. I'm just a dude. I'm not an influencer. I'm not here to influence or whatever. I'm just giving an opinion. And it is my opinion that there are still some books overpriced. As also, it is my opinion that are some books that are too freaking low like these. I will see you at the next video. And as always, keep on hunting. Make sure to come down to Sentiment Depot Antiques and Collectibles where I'm set up with all of my comics located at 238 West Delaware Ave, Pennington, New Jersey. Open every day except for Monday and Tuesday. Enjoy 10% off from Wednesday to Friday. See you there.